Most people imagine Indian reservations as tucked away slices of heaven, maybe some pocketed oasis of vibrant greens and flowing water in what is otherwise a wasteland. Those people are wrong. The Navajo reservation is as sandy and barren as the rest of the desert, and at mm, 22,475 miles it's neither green nor fun-sized. Not that I hate it. The miles of faded highway, highway roads speed past me blending together with the sand that stretches out. Stretches out to far off, rigid mountains. Why is where it's hard? There is a rhythm to it all. Behind me, Marina is still stretched out on the fold-out bed, cuddling the pillow, a substitute for her blanket that's long since fallen off the bed. My old gym clothes are a little small for her, and the shorts only reaching halfway down her thighs. But hey, I'm not complaining. <laughs> Soon we're rolling into a town, its jagged namesakes peeking over the horizon. Chip rock. The town itself is typical for this desert. Nothing fancy like a high rise, just a whole lot of plain shacks sitting on top of gravel, painted worn browns and beiges. From behind me, there's a light, almost fluffy yawn. I wonder how that bundle of joy handles mornings. Morning. That's not halfway down her thighs. Oh, hey, you're finally awake. Uh huh. She yawns again and thumps back against the bed. Guess she's not a morning person. And there's still some coffee in the- Oh wow, is that shipwreck? Oof. Take it back. Marina rushes behind me and grabs the back of the seats, her eyes sparkling. It's huge! I can't believe we can see it from so far away! On closer inspection, my clothes are way too tight for her. My poor shirt is being stretched to its limit. Of course, this doesn't seem to bother her at all. I don't know if I'm more embarrassed for myself or for her. Well, we have to get moving now, so go get dressed or whatever. Uh, sure thing. <laughs> she scampers off to the back, finally giving me room to breathe as I make my way to the driver's seat. Until I accidentally glance at the rearview mirror. In the middle of the motorhome, Marina slips out of her pajamas and into her regular clothes. Geez, the bathroom is right there. I adjust the mirror and try my hardest to stay focused on anything else I can look at. Fully dressed, Marina pops up, uh, back up beside me and settles in the passenger seat. The desolate road continues until suddenly, as if out of nowhere, we're greeted by a line of cars, RVs, buses, and every other kind of vehicle under the blazing sun. All lumped together, stacked one on top of the other, side by side, and every single one blasting their horns. What the... Whoa, you think this is because of the treasure? Yes. I grit my teeth and flop back in my seat. I can only pray these are tourists, and I was the only one dumb enough to humor the scam. We're soon assimilated into the traffic jam. Slowly the motorhome inches forward, but when we finally reach the front, a whole new monster awaits us. Laid out on the dirt, barely in the shadow of the looming mountain, is a giant cluster that can only be described as such. Campers, tents, tarps, booths, you name it. A chaotic horde of people crowd around the entire unorganized mess. I cringe at the very sight of it. I'm in hell. Marina pushes her face against the window in awe of the sheer insanity. I don't think I've seen this many people since the concert. Oh god, she's gonna try and break from the overstimulation. The choir of horns serenade us from behind. Groaning, I pull forward and squeeze the motorhome into the nearest available space, stuffed tightly between everything else. Backing out is going to be a real pain. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go find that treasure! Please put on some sunscreen. Marina sits up and nearly leaps out of the car, but I grab her wrist and pull her back into her seat. Just hold on a second. Her enthusiasm fades. Oh, that's right. You were only going to drop me off and leave. I do not feel good about leaving you in the desert. You're just gonna die. Sorry, but I'm gonna stick around a bit longer. F for real? She starts sniffling. You're so nice to me, Amber. I, I think I might cry. I... Hold it in. We gotta think of a game plan first. Okay. <laughs> Marina returns to her usual happy-go-lucky self while I grimace at the chaos outside. 
If I suspend my disbelief and assume the treasure is real, where would we even start? We don't even have any equipment. I guess we may as well start by checking out the place. I mean, yeah. Ugh. I'm the first to make my way out into the sea of people. My nose is assaulted with the smells of campfires and B.O. masked in suntan lotion. It smells like tourists, alright? That is a big ass rock. Rena finishes her run around the motorhome and huddles close to me, her eyes still wide with wonder but far less gung-ho than before. The two of us make our way through the makeshift campground, following a guardrail that's been set up to separate the visitors from the rock. All the while we pass different scenes staring, starring, oh. Uh, all the while we pass different scenes starring all sorts of people, and use anchor elbowing nosy hecklers out of the way while she tries to report, men on top of motorhomes and lawn chairs strumming away on guitars, even vendors have set up shop here selling overripened fruit from their booths. Rain is speechless, looking on in overwhelmed curiosity and hovering so close that I keep tripping over her, I'm half expecting her to grab onto one of my belt loops. Surprise, thanked her to be very good with crowds. Please stay behind the guardrail! I repeat, please stay behind the guardrail! Bruh, you are gonna give me a fucking heart attack. Huh. A booming voice shouts over the cackling, crackling of a megaphone. Pushing through the crowd, we're shoved into a part of the crowd that's mobbed by, mobbing by an opening in the guardrail. They're barred from advancing by a lone man standing on top of a folding chair and clutching his megaphone like a shotgun. Stay behind the guardrail! Please be considerate of Navajo land! Alright, dude, please stop shouting. My What's goodness. going on? Oh no, let's go home. Not sure. I think. The sun reflects off of the truck behind him. I squint my eyes at the word printed on its side. Navajo Parks and Recreation. This could get nasty. Mm. Maybe they're moshing. People did that at the concert. Marina. Darling, this is not a concert. I know there's people on guitars, but nobody's in a mosh pit right now. Just what the hell kind of concert did you go to anyway? Yeah. Wait. Well, sorry. In the back of the marsh, distant from the calamity, is a familiar sight: blonde hair intertwined and running through a dark red bandana. What's wrong? Remember that loud chick from the gas station? A little. I was too busy with my slushy to really notice. Why? I think we just found our first lead. I always trails off when I start towards the girl, pushing my way through the crowd. Hey, Amber, wait! I'm just gonna ask her? She doesn't seem that nice. Putting on my person mask, I take a deep breath and place my hand on her shoulder with a forced smile. For the last time, old man, I don't have any! Any what? Huh? She whoops around, her eyes prepared for murder, but her features switch to standby mode as she realizes her mistake. Oh. What does the old man want from you, bandana girl? Uh, sorry, but didn't I see you at that convenience store yesterday? Oh yeah, that dump. Outside of Roswell, right? Yep, that was us. I'm Amber. The other girl is Marina. Marina waves and I extend my hand. The girl's eyes narrow, but she eventually shakes it with a surprisingly strong grip. Why are you approaching strangers? Mariah. Oh, that's a nice Everyone name. Everyone here for the treasure? They'd be idiots if they weren't. Why is our faces so big and yours smaller? Like, what is this? Are you just standing further away? Hey, what do you know? You were right, Amber. You say that like it's a good thing. You guys here for the gold too? Not sure why else somebody would come out. I just like rocks. She looks over the scenery and wrinkles her nose. To this place. Hey, I like rocks. The ray of sunshine next to me is looking for the gold. I'm just the ride. Step away from the guardrail! You're all getting out of hand! Okay, God. I'll leave. The horde presses in, the yelling grows louder. You aren't getting through, so I don't even know why- 
can of beer flies through the air and cracks him on the forehead. The liquid running down his face. Oof. Now would be a great time to have a spray bottle. Oh, come on! Um... Navajo Parks and Recreation. They are trying to keep well-meaning treasure hunters from carving up the rock because of its religious significance. Don't be a bitch about it. Jeez. Doesn't surprise me. This is a four-corner state, so there's lots of stuff like that out here. No one's gonna set the Pope on fire for religious reasons either, I mean... I think it's sweet that they're trying to protect big ol' Shippy. Do not call it Shippy. Raya stares at her as if questioning her entire existence. But it's a rock. Yeah, and it's got cultural significance. So, shut the fuck up. So? It's only good for postcards and carving big monuments. Why is it such a big deal if people want to look for treasure up there? It's fucking Mariah. Oh no. Well, it's not gonna make much of a difference either way. Why is that? You a non-believer? <sighs> no, I'm just not a sucker. I thought we were getting information from this woman. Now you're insulting her. That's not very nice, Amber. Yeah. Well, it's true. It's obvious that this is just an elaborate scam and everyone got ripped off. Before I finish my sentence, a cocky overgrown smile makes it on way onto Mariah's face, oozing with snide confidence. What if I told you I could prove the treasure is real? Alright, sure. I'd say you're full of it. Does that mean the treasure's real? Like, honest to goodness real? Overwhelmed with excitement, Marina springs up and down, all while Raya gives a smug nod. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, right. Look, I'm sure the treasure is real for the sake of the visual novel, but I personally am on Amber's side. I would not get involved, like, oh my soul. Oh, ye of little faith. I said I could prove it, didn't I? You did, but you have yet to do so. And how exactly are you gonna do that? Come back to my base full of highly trained elite treasure hunters. Then, I'll show you. <laughs> okay, treasure hunter, sure. Elite what now? How much treasure is there in the world that you can make a living off of treasure hunting, but then it doesn't sustain you enough that you can just retire? You have to continue hunting treasure. Highly trained, elite treasure hunters. Alright. Fun zoom. Right. Thanks, but no thanks. We'll pass. What? But why? Well, because... You said we needed a game plan, right? This is the best chance we have right now. A terrifying amount of determination emanates from her as she forces an unwavering stare on me. Were the rocks always there? I keep noticing stuff at this background that I just have not been paying attention to. Her gaze intensifies. I look down at my dusty shoes and finally give in. Jeez, if it'll make you that happy, I'll do it. Yay! Oh, she's really damn determined. I'll give her that much. I'm not sure if I could have said no. Probably not. But this better be legit, you hear? Points of Mariah. I'm not in the mood to be jerked around today. Yeah, yeah, I'll keep my word. Hey! Stop it! God damn, dude, put the megaphone down. <laughs> we look back into the crowd, the guardrails have toppled over, and the crowd sword surge toward the man. I'm warning you, stay back! I have a megaphone! Can we help this man? Crowd circles in around the chair and topples it over, the man crashing down with it. We should. Probably scram. Way ahead of you. Shame. Sleek and lavish, Mariah's motorhome is like a mansion on wheels. It's chromey, black paint is so fresh you can practically smell the primer. Here we are! Base, sweet base! You're a strange one, aren't you? She throws the door open. Joe! Tess! Fuck up, we have guests! 
Marina and I shoot each other in unsure glance and then enter the mountain Oh, hey. You do finally manage to make some friends. Fandano guy. <laughs> I like Bob Marley. It's a nice bed, then. <clears throat> Blow it out your ass, slacker. Yikes. It's just as big and as fancy on the inside, making my RV look like a toilet in comparison. It's definitely a luxury class, unlike my class C. Or at least it would be luxury motorhome if not for the seemingly random decor. Wall is littered with posters of ska bands. Bob Marley is a ska band? The worst genre of music? How dare you? Ska is fantastic. Even weirder are the license plates scattered everywhere, some in boxes, some on the table, some strung together like a wind chime. Yes, that is weird. Beanbag in the corner and bottles of empty beer and liquor fast off on the ground. The place looks more, looks more like a frat pad than a base. Yeah, clean up after yourselves, dudes. Impression further aided by the guy sprawled out on the couch, his head wrapped in a bandana like Mariah's. Someone's feisty today. No luck with the treasure, I take it? Ah, a fellow non-believer. Yeah, no thanks to you. Hey now, me and Tess were holding down the fort. That's a very important job. The most important. Yeah, because someone didn't have someone to hold down the fort and then their fort got stolen. He gestures at the cot above him, a hollow space under some blank cabinets. Uh, it looks like a row of cupboards used to be there and were stripped out to make room for it. Lying on top of it is a little girl facing the other direction, fiddling with something I can't make out. She's wearing another identical banana. Isn't that right, Tess? <laughs> oh, she's so cute. <laughs> Tess gives a barely existent nod and continues tinkering. See, what did I tell you? Has she been like this the entire time? Yep. She hasn't moved since you left this morning. It's kind of sad. Please. Don't think I haven't noticed you were on that couch when I left. Guilty as charged. <clears throat> Clear my throat reminding them of our presence. Oh, right. This is my team. The lug who's become one with the couch is Joseph, and the squirt is my kid sister, Tess. Cool. Joe, Tess, this is Alyssa and Melina. What? Amber and Marina. That wasn't even close. Whatever. Alright. They are looking for the treasure, too. Hey there, ladies. Hello. Can you holy... Hope the highly trained elite team are hidden in the bathroom. Hey, I'm Marina. It's really nice to meet you. Maria jumps in front of me, taking hold of the conversation by its throat. The other girl is Amber. Say hi, Amber. No. Hi. <laughs> Don't mind her. She's just grumpy. I'm not grumpy. I am grumpy. You sound pretty grumpy to me. Hey, you don't even know me. Fuck you. You've got cracks in your goggles. I groan and strut muttering nonsense under my breath. Didn't think being a realist would make me grumpy. She doesn't think the treasure exists. Uh oh, Mariah, we've got a non-believer in our midst. What are you gonna do, burn me at the stake? Why do you keep saying that? Why do you think I brought her here? If you think you'll be able to convince me that this treasure is real, then fine. But you have another thing coming. Come on! Where's your sense of adventure? I left it at home. Back in my motorhome. We can take you and your sense of adventure back to Carlsbad if you want. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Behave yourself or I swear I will turn this motorhome around. Carlsbad? California? New Mexico. Rolling her eyes, Mariah walks over to a drawer. From inside, she pulls out something wrapped in cloth and brings it over to me. Go ahead. Take a peek. Is it a finger? Her smirk reappears, curling across her face as if it... This were a game and there was no way she could lose. Hesitant, I bring my hand to the rag and unwrap it. What? No way. Is this... That's right. Gold. How do I do this? How do I read her mind? Lying swaddled in the cloth is a yellow nugget. I give it a squeeze, 
soft. Definitely not a piece of pyrite. It's gold. Is gold that soft? I don't actually know. But how? You know the miner who had the treasure? That's Joseph's great great uncle. You're lying. <laughs> he looks so happy though. I can testify for that. It's true. Cool. This thing is a family heirloom. Alright, why do your people's go so tiny? More like it was lying forgotten in my basement until we stumbled across it as kids. I don't really know how much gold is worth, but I'm assuming quite a bit. After that, I heard great tales of the miner and his hidden treasure. So why did you only go and look for it now? Not several years ago. She went to the library and found old newspaper clippings making fun of them. Then I made it my life's goal to find his treasure. Cool, but why'd you only go now after the book was published? She's been obsessed with it ever since. Hell. Hmm. That's a load. I saw you at the store yesterday. If you knew so much about the treasure, then why did you have to buy one of those journals? Another side of my family probably got the journal after he kicked it. We didn't hear about it until everyone else did. This doesn't prove anything. Mariah shoots me a scowl similar to the look she gave the clerk yesterday. What are you trying to say? Sis. Tess finally moves, hopping down from her cot. What? Another license plate wind chime in her hand. The plates clanking together as she runs over to Mariah. Sis, I finished it. Oh. She says this without a hint of emotion, her eyes in a constant half-open state. Kind of unsettling. It is adorable. How many is that now? Uh, 44? 45. Oh. Why do you have so many license plates? Rina bends down to Tessa's level and greets her. Oh, are you collecting license plates? Is that a crime? Uh-huh. I only have five more until I have all 50 states. Oh, that's actually really cute. And what state do you have there? New Mexico. Hmm. Her voice and expression don't change till as dry as the desert air. Mariah scoffs. At least yesterday wasn't a complete waste of time. That junker was a piece of crap. What? Wait a second. All the parts were rustier than my ass. Even the scrap metal wasn't worth it. Just be thankful we found it. We'd be busted if I hadn't salvaged the good bits. Besides, that money is going to keep us from starving. You literally have gold. I look at Marina, but she doesn't seem to have put it together. Uh, about that car you found. That wasn't outside Roswell, was it? Oh no, I didn't put it together either. You guys... Marina's eyes go wide, realization finally penetrating her skull. Yeah, not too far from the store. What do you care? Hmm... I can feel my blood begin to boil. Marina can feel it too. Amber? Every part of me is shaking. Struggle to spit out the words. Her car was stolen outside of Roswell yesterday. It was out of gas, so we went to get some. Joseph is the next to realize it, followed by Tess. Oh, crap. So? I can't hold it in anymore. Sorry, Marina. So? You stole her car and dismantled it! Joseph jumps off the couch and apologetically bows repeatedly, all in one swift motion. Each bow makes me a little angrier. Joey said it was okay. Mm. I, I thought it was! Mariah gave the go-ahead! You told them it was alright? Yeah, so? It's your own fault for leaving it out there! What are they supposed to do? It's out of gas. You can't call AAA. How on earth is it our fault that it broke down? You know, hmm. finders, keepers. That is a crime. Theft is a crime. <laughs> what about the phone? She had clothes in the car, surely? I mean, her phone was there, her wallet, her identification must have been in there. You think what? She just got murdered, so you stole 
what could possibly be evidence in a murder. There's no way you can justify this. It's a freaking car! Mm. Um. Test tags on my shirt. Toe oh, child. What? Do not touch me. I don't mean to, but the word snaps out of my mouth. Tiny girl shrinks away. Alright, Amber, just calm down. We can talk this out. Yeah. She holds out the wind chime made of Marina's license plate. Her eyes cast downward. You can have it. Never mind. Calming down is not gonna happen. A hand grasps my shoulder. I turn to Marina. She shakes her head and smiles. Amber, it's okay. It really isn't. Your wallet, your phone, your stuff. But... Really, it's fine. It's not. She bends back down to Tess and smiles reassuringly. You can go ahead and keep it, sweetie. The trio, Mariah included, are taken back by Marina's saint-like reaction. Oh, I would throw hands, man. Don't worry, guys. It's fine. It's not, though. <laughs> Joseph breathes a sigh of relief. It really... no. Oh, God. Thank you so much. <sighs> We're all really sorry about this. Right, Mariah? Yeah, I guess. You guess? Where's her phone? Where's her clothes? <laughs> it was the softest slap I've ever heard. <laughs> About as fed up as I am with this, I am. Joseph shoots her a glare and smacks her on the back of the head. Ow! Alright, oh, I'm sorry and stuff. <sighs> Marina, are you sure? They destroyed your car. They destroyed your brother's car? Yeah, but it was pretty run down anyway. And they're not gonna give you the money back for it. <sighs> You're unreal, you know that? Anyway, we should head out now. We have a few things to take care of. I'm gonna go punch some rocks. Thanks for showing us the gold! Now I'm sure the treasure's real! Sure, whatever. No problem, ladies. Yeah. Again, really sorry for all the trouble. If there's anything we can do for you, just give us a shout. I give her her phone and clothes back and her identification. Sure thing. <sighs> we head for the door, but Marina turns around before stepping outside. By the way, was there a phone in the car? The pink case, eh? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, We kind of sold that, too. I'm gonna kill you all. Um, mm, 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 I'm very mad. <laughs>